One thing I can definitely say is I'm 44 years old and I made more money in my 40s than I did in my 20s making music. Let's go ahead and talk about it. Bolo! Now, I'm definitely going to keep it real with you guys because I'm actually a late bloomer. I actually started making music when I was 20 years old. I didn't start making music until I got to college. I thought I was going to be this big professional football player. I was bouncing around from school to school, and I ended up in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and I ended up going to Stillman College, and I ended up meeting my guy, Ty Cutter, and he had a computer with Cakewalk on it, and I made my first beat in the spring of 2000. In the summer of 2000, I just went crazy. I just started making a whole bunch of beats and I was buying anything I can get my hands on. I would work little odd jobs or whatever and I would buy um, little beat machines and stuff like that. And then over time, I ended up getting enough equipment to where I could start making beats. A uh, huge shout out to my ex-girlfriend in college. She actually took her refund check and bought me a, uh, a computer, a compact computer. And that really springed everything off for me. So shout out to her and wherever she's at right now. But um, yeah, I actually started everything in my 20s. So, you know, for a lot of you guys, um, some of you guys started when you guys were <laughs> eight, nine years old. Some of you guys started when you were teenagers. I started in my 20s. But during that journey, I did so many different things that were wrong. Um. One of the main things that I was doing was I was working so fast. I was trying to get any little bit of money that I could. I would try to get anybody to come into the studio, which I would not do right now. But I was getting anybody and any little bit of money to come into the studio to just try to make a profit and try to do whatever I could do. I would make really good beats and just sell them for, you know, $50, $100, stuff like that. And as time went on, I really noticed that even though I was making money, I wasn't making the money that I thought I should have been making. And I didn't end up doing that until I was about 27, 28 years old when I finally got my first like really big song, like regional song at that time. And then I started seeing what music can really be, even though I still wasn't on like a major label, but I was making tracks for people and I was getting a lot of money. Some tracks I was selling for like $750, $1,000. Some people would pay me $2,000, $2,500. I never got to that $3,000 range, but I, well, I think, did I? I think I did. But this is during the time where I had a really hot song. And if you guys know, like how I know, in the early 2000s, it was different than how it is now. You could really like sell beats back then because it wasn't like, a gazillion and one producer. So if you were a decent producer in your area, and plus if you had like a regional or a state hit, people were paying you. And the only reason why you were not getting paid is because you weren't allowing yourself to get paid because you were chasing after the smaller bags. And that's what I was doing. I was chasing after very small numbers. So like me at that time, I was recording people for $20, $15, $25 an hour. And I was thinking, hey, this is what my life is going to be. I'm just going to, you know, do a few sessions, charge a little bit of money, and I'll be fine. And I felt that way for a long time, to be honest with you guys. I really felt that way because I was like, okay, if I'm making $1,000 a week or sometimes making $750 or $500 a week, that was enough to get me by. And, of course, we know there's a thing called inflation. And... <laughs> Over time, inflation got really weird because um, when I got to Atlanta in 07, I got there basically at the end of summer in 07, and um, everything was cool, and then we had the recession hit. And the recession hit maybe like a year and a half after I got there, and things got real scary. I ain't going to lie to you. I, it was it was kind of a crazy situation, but I, I, I made it out of it because I had a studio, um, and you know I had enough bread saved up from me, you know, recording and and getting all the tracks produced for people when I was living in Florida. So I had like two years saved up. And then I had a few songs that end up getting some traction. So people were still coming to me, but I was not doing it in a way that I'm doing it now. The one thing I can say about age is that we look at things totally different. 
And the way I look at things now is I don't chase the small situations anymore. Like I get a whole bunch of people right now that hit me up all the time. They're like, Bolo, how much you charge for beats? Bolo, how much do you charge for mixing? Bolo, how much you do this? And Bolo, how much you do that? And a lot of times I just respond like, hey, I don't really do that. Or, you know, I really can't just charge you a price right there, you know, because I, I can't really give you a price because I don't do that. In this day and age right now, if I'm working with an artist, I'm working with that artist right now. And it's not about me charging them per beat. It's about us building something. It's about us building something more than me charging you $200, $500, $1,000 for a beat. As we all know, $1,000 right now in this day and age is not much. It will it will pay some bills now. Don't get me wrong. Like if you're in college or something like that and you get $1,000, that's one thing. But I'm saying for somebody like me right now who has responsibilities, who has a family, $1,000 right now is not a lot of money to anybody, especially in this economy. So when I got older and I actually got into some opportunities, when I kind of grew into these opportunities, I kind of learned that chasing the smaller bags is cool. But I had to look at that as a side hustle rather that rather than that being the main thing. So when I turned maybe about 31, I looked at things a lot different because I was working with a established producer and I was still running at the time. I was still trying to get these little small bags. And one day he sat down with me and he was like, listen, your problem is that you keep chasing after these little, little situations and that stuff is taking up your time and you're over here in this big situation where you can use your talent as leverage. And trust me, I didn't get it at first because he was telling me this during Christmas time and I needed about $4,000 to, to do everything I needed to do. But I survived it. I made it through. I made it through Christmas and I was good. After I survived that, he came to me like maybe that January or February and he was like, are you good? And I'm like, yeah, but I was, you know, I was still kind of upset because I was like, man, you know, you're telling me that, you know, all the beats and stuff we're doing, we're going to use that for leverage and this, that, whatever. And he's like, listen, you got to trust the process in this. He said, still go get your little bags and stuff like that, but don't spend your money and spend your time on being in the studio for hours upon hours upon hours of necessarily going in there and charging these people these very ridiculously low rates when you already have music and you already have stuff out there that proves that you're better than what you are. And that's what a lot of us fail to understand, whether we're in our 20s, our teens, our 30s, our 40s, or whatever. A lot of times we have stuff that we're very good at and we tend to undervalue ourselves because we think that we have to get the smaller bag. We have to chase that smaller bag. What I learned during that time was when I was working with him is even though I worked with less people, I made more money because I was making more quality music and I was working with quality people who were willing to pay me for what I was doing. But I still had to work to get to that point. Now, like I was saying before, I still did some sessions. I still did some sessions for at that time I was charging $50 an hour. I was charging $50 an hour, and then if I had to travel to your studio, I was charging you $65 an hour, which that's like kind of like a going rate still going on right now um, for more established engineers and stuff like that. Now, if you're younger, might be a little lower, but, you know, get your bread. But I would do that, but I would maybe do that maybe like twice a week just to say, okay, look, okay, I went in here, I did a four-hour session, I made some bread, okay, I got at least five, $600 this week, um... My guy, he wanted to get a beat. Okay, I'm going to show him some love. I'm going to just charge him 500 for this beat. You know, cool. And so over time, it kind of kept me afloat during those times of when the recession started to when the recession was kind of easing up a little bit. But during that time, I was actually meeting more quality clients because I was in a position that I could meet that. And the reason why I was in that position is because of what I put the, the time and the work in to get to that point, which I'll talk about that in a second. But once I got in that position, I seen how music works. It made me look at this thing totally different. And this is not just with music, but I can really say this is, this is just for any business. And I understand why businesses turn down 
customers sometimes. Every customer that you have is not the best customer for you. They may be your homeboys, they may be your family, they may be your homegirls, it may be a girl you like, it may be a guy you like, it may be whatever. But everybody is not the best customer for you because a lot of times what they'll do is they'll drag out a situation forever and still think that you're supposed to charge them and do things the same way it was for 10 or 15 years. <laughs> I mean, for real. Like there are some people right now that still think that they can still call me and get a session for $20 an hour. <laughs> it's crazy. But that's some people's mindsets. They don't want to grow with you. And, you know, maybe you outgrew them. But that's where you try to take your talents and leverage your talents to where you can be with more quality people, more quality artists, more quality producers, more quality situations. And that's why certain companies, when people try to give them, you know, a quote and some people say, well, I can't pay that. They're like, all right, cool. You know, you don't want to pay for my work. That is cool. Moving on, because a lot of times most of your problems are going to come from people who don't want to pay you what your worth is. And that's what I learned all the way throughout my 30s. And I had to learn that when I finally got into my biggest record deal situation and I was up there and I was seeing how these people worked in, in the record companies. And I was like, okay, this is how it really works. Like you find your situation that works best for you and you find the people that you really want to cater to and you have a plan for that. And that's what it's been since I've turned 34 years old to now that I'm 44 years old. YouTube right now is a great, I would say a great side gig for what I'm doing right now because it pays pretty cool. Don't get me wrong. Like it pays pretty cool, but it's, it's not like I'm making no Mr. Beast money or nothing like that. But it's a good side hustle because for me getting paid on my publishing, for me getting paid from, you know, for, you know, doing tracks and stuff like that for people still. And for me, you know, uh, still going out and still doing mixes and stuff like that and still putting artists out and still making some money from that as well because I do have a few artists where I make some money independently. What I've learned is there's so many different ways of getting to the bag that you can really slow down on everything and just focus on what you need to get done Focus on who you're trying to, you know, get into the studio or focus on what type of music you're trying to make or even sit down and have some time to even mix records properly and produce records properly. I have more time now than what I did in my 20s and I'm making more because I actually have things planned out. The good thing about being over 40 and, and experiencing life is you learn what BS to deal with and what BS to not deal with, okay? And at any moment, it's going to be some type of BS. I ain't going to lie. But when you know what situations that you can work with and what situations you can kind of tame, then you will, you will obtain a lot more rather than just sitting here and, oh, I got to make $20 here, $30 here, do that, do this, and do that. And I know some of you guys are probably thinking, but Bolo, it's hard to do that because, you know, what if we live somewhere and we, we can't find people to do that? And, 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 you know, we can't just go and just uproot ourselves and leave. Right now, y'all have the best thing right now and it's what you guys are looking at. If you guys are watching me right now, I know that you guys have internet. And the one thing about the internet is... You can reach and touch just about anybody you want to reach and touch on the internet because we all know there's a lot of good people on here and there's a lot of scammers on here. And one thing I can say about people who scam on here or people who don't do the right thing on here is they found a way to reach an audience. So if they can find a way to reach an audience, you can find a way to reach an audience. There's no excuse. But the thing about it is you still have to have some type of talent. You still have to have some type of talent. I still, at my age, have to have enough talent to produce for kids that are half of my age, which I'm going to speak on that on another video. But you still have to have some type of talent and prove that you are worthy of being in these places with these people. You just can't be a carpenter 
after just declaring it one day and say, I'm going to start building some steps and building a house. No, you have to take your time and learn how to be a really good carpenter. And of course, when you do start out, yes, things are going to, you know, be a little bit cheaper. You might not get paid what you want, but over the years, you have to learn, okay, I'm building up this, I'm building up this, I'm building up this to be able to one day, if I do want to be a carpenter, yes, I can own my own carpenter company, carpenting company, and I don't even have to work. I can just pay my employees, which that's the smart way of doing it. That's the way I'm actually kind of doing it now as well. I have my own producers. I have my own engineers to where now I can just basically oversee the situations. I don't have to work as hard. Well, sometimes, you know, sometimes you got to go in there with these kids, man, and do what you got to do. But I can go in there and get things done fast and efficiently because I, I still stay on my game. You guys keep me on my game because when I make beats on here, y'all are like, hey, Bo, I don't know about that one. Or, you know, but, you know, you guys really keep me on my game on here. And when I'm doing new products and trying new things, I got to stay on my game with it. But either way, me being in my 40s has learned that sometimes you got to slow down. You got to look at the landscape first. Decide how you want to conquer the landscape and decide how you're going to conquer it. Plan it down. Get a plan. Review the plan. Visualize the plan. Come up with some ideas of how the plan should be executed. And then go out and see if the plan is going to go the right way or if it's going to fold. But if it folds, let it fold quickly. So then you can revise the plan while you're, you know, in that, you know, planning moment of if it folded or if it's going good, because even if it's going good, you got to revise a few things too, if it's going good to keep it going. Or if the plan doesn't go as good, you have to revise things to kind of get it back on track. So you're always revising things, but you're doing it in a way to where the success can come easier, not harder. It's not about running yourself in the ground. It's not about being tired. It's about working smarter rather than working harder. And that's what I've learned by being a producer and an engineer in my 40s. And that's how now I've been able to maintain so much more money and to maintain so much a better and healthier lifestyle because I learned to just sit back and plan things a little bit better and understand that there's way more opportunities out here than just being in the studio. I have YouTube. I have affiliate links. I, you know, I have uh, sometimes some speaking engagements that I've been booked for. Um, I even got um, a, a paid invite to be a guest at uh, certain like little um, venues and stuff like that, which was I'm not really into that. You know, I'm not that I don't get paid that much. That's only like I think the highest I got was like 500 for something like that. But I'm not really into stuff like that. If it's like a music function or something like that. Just give me a press pass and let me come on in there. Let me meet my people. That's the way I am. But yes, I made more money in my 40s than I did in my 20s. Okay. Now my 30s, that was a little different. <laughs> that was a hell of a ride right there. Made a lot of, a lot of good cheese. Damn, man. That was good. But if you look at it from what it is from when my, I would say major career has kind of declined to now I'm in this YouTube phase and you know, I'm kind of like, you know, bringing out a few more artists and trying to work with more artists and even producing for uh, some artists, even, you know, even working with some, you know, legendary artists at the same time, too. And they're still doing their things. I've made more in my 40s so far than I did in my 20s. And that's just by planning and seeing my vision and seeing this thing all the way through. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys learned something from it. And like I always say, peace out.